Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's uh, more action here. Alliance versus Vega. Game two, we just saw game one. Alliance, uh, of course, a game up. Uh, 55 minute, uh, bit of an extravaganza. The Tinker for no one. Not quite enough to hold it off for of Vega. Alliance has pushed too strong. Uh, the load of Terrorblade, too strong as well. The third win it's had so far today. Quite a performance from Alliance. But let's get ourselves into game two. The draft is underway. Here we have, I mean, the question is, Ben, are we going to see Terrorblade again? 10 seconds I think remaining. That instead of banning out the heroes that we see from Alliance, Five like the first phase brew, that it would be better to try and counter it because Terrorblade is not seen as particularly strong Reserve in this patch time. as his Brewmaster, at least not yet. Yes. Right? You, so you think brew is more of an issue? No, I don't. No, you, you deserve it. I think that they, need, they need to draft against it as opposed to ban it. Yes. Because they just did not... They, did, they didn't have the tools before. No. Yeah. I mean, so what, so what do you draft to deal with it? Uh, I think Disruptor. AA would have been pretty good. They banned it out themselves, yeah. though. Uh, okay, so that kind of opened it up for a more comfortable pickup for, for Alliance because the AA was banned. More importantly, Elder Titan, which yeah. OG first picks. Why is no one else using it? Especially, they like they pick it when it's not... Like, when when they, the actually, actually, actually Ben, you say that, but one thing you got to remember, the AA Ice Blast, it doesn't stop the sun. It's still like good at bursting him down. Like, I guess. That plus AA plus yeah. Zeus, for example, I yeah. think is really good Same at kind just of magical killing him. Yeah. Or with the Tinker. Uh, just so Alliance you can't save him, especially if there's like a grave on his team. Yeah. But yeah, it's we'll going to be the brew thing coming out. We saw this earlier back. from S4. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw it twice. Uh, both games against Fnatic did win them both. Uh, it's another kind of Alliance staple that they've been having a lot of fun with so far today. And the Terrorblade, bam, Vega. Bit of respect there for Loda. It's going to take it straight Ten out. Ten seconds remaining. Yep. Uh, there's not that many Orchid Five carriers nowadays, remaining. which I think is one of Brew's biggest weakness, which is instant silence. Anything with a cast point is Reserve generally going to be too slow to deal with a blink clapping ulting Brew. But if you have an uh, instant cast point like Orchid, uh, Lion Hex is pretty good, anything like that Alliances that can stop bad. him from ulting, you will win a team fight and force him to get BKB very early on. So, uh, what are the Orchid carriers? Quaswex Invoker, Quap and Storm come, come yeah. to mind. So I would like to see teams explore this solution, Ten these solutions remaining. as a deal with the Brewmaster. Um, Five yeah. seconds remaining. Well, fourth ban here from Alliance. See what they want to take away time. from Vega. You said themselves Vega would like to maybe play a bit better in the early stages, look to secure that's part of the game. Get a bit more action going. Alliance so far, they've certainly banned uh, a, lot, a lot of the heroes that would be great for them. And uh, there's another one, another hero that could really get the ball rolling for Vega. Vega and Night Stalker taken away. To pick. So Alliance respecting that. And, uh, and Night Stalker gets it as well. Just a hero that's incredible. I mean, already, against a Dazzle and the Brewmaster Crippling Fear, that's that's just a nuisance to play against. It really is. Because, yeah. I mean, as a, you just you can just make a beeline for the die, and there's nothing you can do to stop Ten him, really. Seconds remaining. I'm surprised Big Coddle. I'm not sure yeah. what the Coddle bait is about. Five seconds remaining. The Lycan definitely makes sense. Darkseer plus Lycan is just absolute Reserve misery time. for any support out there. So Vega have already a f potent combo. Probably need a little bit more damage to dump into that, as well as a good Ion Shell carrier. I think Ember Spear is really good at dealing with Brewmaster. Uh, he has like decent burst, but he doesn't have to commit to a fight. You okay. don't want to commit to a fight versus Brewmaster. You want him to com commit his ultimate and then just peace out. Like Stampede used to be picked very often, like while he was splitting. Uh, Ember, Weaver, these heroes that can just like threaten a brew, but back out if brew actually commits. Ax. And then, ooh. Ooh, that's the nice. a I mean, Alliances it is of course that age old counter to the Dazzle. Um, bit of control, of course, against the brew as well. But picking about third, Alliance still, they have three picks to, to pick around this axe. It's still, uh, I think it's still a great pick yeah. regardless. The only Ten problem is remaining. that the laning is, I think, is fairly obvious for the Axe because Darkseer is most likely going to be off lane and then Axe is either going to be... Oh yeah, where are you playing the Axe? Is it just likely jungle, jungle or, okay. or safe lane. But if you put a safe lane, you have scaling issues. If you yeah. put it in the jungle, you have laning issues. So Alliance can identify that very early uh, on. Unless it's uh, kind of Axe, Darkseer, bottom lane, jaw lane. That's, I think, pretty weak. Because both of them got the Crete waves, you know, really punish loader. You need levels though. I guess. You just you just sack yeah. the lane with like a like let's say Weaver. Weaver would be 
great down there. Yeah. He's, she's just, just a, he doesn't care about the way that the Axe Dark yeah. Sea You're okay with getting sacked. Yeah. It's like not a big deal. Okay. Slark, I think, is some, sometimes gets sacked, although I don't like it as much versus that lineup. But uh, I, I th also think it's just like, way too risky. Those two heroes can get under leveled, okay. and then you can just swoop in. Like, they're still their offlaner, too. You can just like get an NP on offlane and just, like, just absolutely own those two. So. I mean, the load of lifesteal has been left in. Th this is something that's uh, obviously been prioritized in bans before, but this game obviously opting for Terrorblade ban. There is a lifesteal that's still available in a game where I guess the axe can still work pretty nicely against the lifestealer, uh, but a disruptor, of course, it's, it's lovely to have that. And also, get, yeah, if you're laning pick. against a Darkseer, lifesteal is pretty good at that, or, or is it not necessarily the pick that Alliance would look for? It? That's great for Starks here. Yeah. Let's see what Vega want to take up here now. I'm not sure it's particularly good versus Axe. It kind of works both ways. Okay. Like Axe so with Blade Mail has a lot of armor, yeah. Berserker's Call, but it's just really hard to kill Lifesteal. Five He's very rarely going to get in critical range, and he's going to feast a lot of damage onto the Axe, so that's kind of a wash. But versus Darkseer, time. you know, pretty good. Very good versus Disruptor. I think Jug is pretty good because I like the mix of damage versus the Axe. Magical and physical. Here we are, fourth pick for Vega. Start to reveal a little bit more of their plans in terms of where they do want to place this axe this game. I really would like an Ember from them. I, uh, we did really talk about it, but is there a chance they put the axe mid against the Brew? Yeah, that, that's yeah. actually a very good point that you make. That teams used to run as a counter toward Brew when Brew was like mega popular, but is that no one's type of hero? Because I imagine with that Bane pick as well, Alliance may be anticipating the axe is going to be mid. Ah, I guess well now, there we have it revealed, it's, it's not going to be a mid axe, it is going to be DP in the mid lane. Uh, but then, nonetheless, normally when the Bane is picked up by Alliance, it normally kind of sits around the mid, doesn't it, at the start, to, to help secure us for that early start. I mean, this is exactly how we saw them play earlier today. Uh, they're going to pick up the Brood again. I think, I want to say this is pretty much the same draft that we saw from them this morning. Uh, this, is, this is pretty much classic Alliance. I think Vega's lineup is really good at dealing with Brood. Darkseer yeah. and Axe are just like incredibly good versus. You got the catch. You've got the you got the counter. Yeah. I don't know if they want to put Axe in the safe lane though. Uh, maybe they could do like. I'm trying to think of any other lane possibilities they Five can do. Because if you do Axe safe lane, then that means that Darkseer would have to go off lane or jungle, and your carries would be very vulnerable. Reserve time. So, they but they can't really aggro because Disruptor is terrible at aggro, and Axe is not. A support in that sense. He needs levels in jungle, so they might still pick another hero that is good at dealing with Broodmother, let's say. Okay. Something else, yeah. I like Elsie. El Elsie, I think, is very good versus the Bane. Elsie got a bit of a buff as well, didn't she? Yep, um, she did. What was it? Ten seconds. Overwhelming remaining. odds, I believe. Yep. That does extra damage per unit or something. Yep. It does more damage now. It was at like plus 20 per each level, so it was quite significant. I also think it's good because it Alliances protects Death Prophet. Yeah. We always talk about defensive spells for Death Prophet. Press the attack is exceptional. Well, that's good. true. I guess at the moment, all they've really got is the surge to help DP. But yeah. but that is, that is it. Uh, final ban for Vega Squadron. It's going to be a um, bit of a respect against Ten a Wars Loader, remaining. taking away the Naga. They don't want to go against the TB. They don't want to go against the Naga. Take Five those both away. Remaining. It could be AM. Loader anti-mage. Could Reserve be. Time. Very good versus Darks here. I triple intel lineup. I yeah. think it's pretty good versus Death Prophet as yeah. well. Uh, but then they have this like kind of weird lineup where you have a Broodmother and an Anti-Mage and then a Brewmaster. Like two heroes want to split push, one hero wants to fight. So I, w I would suppose that they would... They almost always outscale with the Broodmother. So it's definitely going to be something that like isn't all any, but something that farms a lot and does well versus Darks here. Lifestealer, I suppose, would be just fine. Yeah, Lifestealer. I guess... Okay, Sven Banner. Alliances well, what about the Juggernaut this game? Juggernaut's okay. Yeah. It just hasn't been their flavor, rather. Oh, maybe they bring something a bit different again here, Alliance. I do like the magic immunity versus the Disruptor. I think yeah, it's that's very always, important to have. That's it. always something that you got to think about, Ten isn't it? And I think it's remaining. a bit... Vega Squadron would have banned out if they, they didn't feel too scared of the kind of the Naga Five Terrorblade long remaining. game that Alliance likes to play for. Gyrocopter. Oh, gyrocopter. Now that now it's a nice mix of team pick. fight. With okay. The, with the Brew and the Gyrocopter, they actually have a pretty good team fight. I great with Dazzle Gyro. Hit a good weave and start getting the flat cannon hits out. The mm -hmm. backliners just start to drop like flies. It is. It's a good BKB hero. You need the magic immunity versus disruptor Ten drugs here. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, but it, I mean, it's, it's definitely not the go-to carry for a lot of teams. Remaining. 
It isn't, but in this patch, Brewmaster, you want to, you you have four heroes that want to fight it with Brewmaster. If you have like three and two, you kind of just waste your Brewmaster because Brewmaster is going to constantly be looking for fights. I like what Vega's going to take the lives to themselves. I mean, this is a hero that does not care about Gyrocopter in the early kind of fighting stages of the game. Surely he just rages, runs at him, starts to chomp for him. But he has a lane for his brood. Is that how the lane's going to go down? You think? You you are going to. I'll get that matchup, uh, or do you try and position the axe against the brood lane? Do you want to do, or is it just going to be axe jungle? As you said, you, you don't think axe is going to go to the off lane with darks? I think it's going to be axe jungle, yep. darks here safe lane, and life or disruptor off. That okay. makes the most sense. Because if Bane hangs around mid, then life can get some farm on bottom. It's kind of like newbie style. Yeah, how they run it. But life is not a good matchup for his brood at all. So I think you want to avoid that lane at all costs. And alliance rarely pull the switcheroo, which is the brood within the safe lane. So we'll see if. They have up their sleep. Ten seconds remaining. I oh, will indeed as we get this one on. Five Second game in. Remaining. Vega versus Alliance here in the upper bracket of the group stages. And here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if Alliance are going to be able to take this one a clean 2 0, or if Vega will be able to swing it back around with a very much a different draft to, to what they showed earlier in game one. And we'll go for the lineups on the side of Alliance. We've got Loader playing the Gyrocopter. Bulldog's going to be on that off lane. Broodmother EGM on his Bane, S4 on his signature Brewmaster, and finally, last but not least, Ake on uh, again, pretty much his signature, the Dazzle, which we've seen a lot of great plays, great saves from the man. Over on the side of Vega, top we've got Solo at the moment. He's going to be uh, joining up with the with the forces of FN on that that live stealer. We'll, so we'll see how much Solo wants to put towards the jungle, and uh, if they're able to get away with that kind of greedier laning play cell. No one on the mid lane on the Death Prophet bottom lane. Sherman the Slayer's hanging around with Mag, but it looks like in, indeed it will, it will just be Mag on his own down here for the time being. Uh, here we have it as we get this set up and the lanes into place. 30 seconds to battle. I mean, Ben, lane-wise, who's who's winning the lanes here? You said Vega, you, you'd like to see them try and put a bit more uh, emphasis on the earlier laning stage and, and getting the earlier action going. Do they have the tools to do so this game? If they get the right lane matchup. Yeah. So it looks like FN is going to be jungling. Did he talk about that? Oh, was FN? Oh. He has an Iron Talon. Oh. I did Okay. So and we'll put Solo in the safe lane. Yeah, I like this. So, so why are you doing this? Is this why? Because why? Lifestealer is terrible versus Brood. Okay. And yeah. X owns Brood. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, X owns yeah. Brood. I was thinking, I've seen some Brood <coughs> beat X, but it was only with the 0 4 4 Where well, you just go straight in with the, the passing the last two. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But they will not dodge. Alliance will not, and Vega will. Uh, I think this is a smart, smart lane rotation thing. Though. Life Stealer is fine at jungling, especially if you don't have supports that can rotate. But the problem is they do have one that can kind of rotate, which is the EGM Bane. Yeah, EGM can certainly be a nuisance. Oh, he's, he loves playing his Bane. Yep, and they do have that Observer Ward that will scout out a jungle Life Stealer, although maybe not as deep as Alliance would have hoped. And four-man mid. All right, Disruptor and DP against the Brew and the Bane. Uh, who's coming out on top here? Two range heroes should be one yeah. range hero. It's good maths, Ben. Mm -hmm. The stats do not lie in this case. Uh, one thing this is going to mean, though, is well, Mag at the moment. Okay, he's, he's just clearing out this camp. Uh, it's a smart thing to do. Make sure he does get that level two before coming down. He's versus lane. Dazzle. Dazzle should not be able to zone out of Darkseer. Those are kind of what two over safe play here yep. from from Mac. He doesn't Dark Seer w fell off a lot because Dark yeah. Seer got a lot more popular. Okay. Because Dark Seer has a lot of armor, six base armor, versus the physical damage from the poison touch from Dazzle. Dark Most Knight. of the zoners have, uh, like Bane, for example, has pure damage on his brain set. What is that? I really they think they're gonna get the kill there? Wow, they, they tried for it. They tried for it, but. Yeah, with the, with the Dazzle, you can't zone him out with Poison Touch. He has so much armor and regen that he just ta just tanks it straight up. But, yeah, I think Mag may be a little bit too conservative with this play here. He is known for being pretty stable, which is not dying, but if you need to take risk if you want to get your farm up. And his Blink Decker last game came way too late because maybe he was a little bit too safe. So, you know, I think I think a lot of the offlaners nowadays think, eh, I don't know. At the same time, like, Universe is known for his very safe and stable play and is used to work out for his teams. So, two different philosophies on that. 
I mean, if anything, though, this is... I mean, we talked about how well uh, Lodo's going to be able to turn up these earlier fights and, and drop his combo. Uh, just the fact that he's going to have this kind of start, that's, that's going to put the Jar in a great place. This is you know, great news for Alliance that the Lodo's going to be able to get this free farm for the time being. Max now coming into the lane. Uh, we'll see how much he's able to do to disrupt the uh, the Jaro's farm, but Lodo should be able to play around with, with his range and uh, still find the farm that he needs to in the spot lane. Now look at this Dazzle, just able to stack up these camps that I like a full creep way because yeah. the Darkseer is not there. And it's it's a big deal. Imagine if they had warded up this camp, what would he do? Go th all the way to the jungle, have to share it with a Lifestealer? Like, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm just generally not a fan of this uh, this offlaner play, at least in this patch. In other patches, maybe an EGM with that. Arcane Rune getting some value out of that Brain Sap. We can see at the moment as well in the mid lane to 2v2 matchup. And did as you said, two range seeming to be one. It's nine for one against five for two. So You like that maths? I see it's working out. No one on the Death Prophet. It's early, certainly with a slight lead. Uh, it's still close. Uh, look towards the top lane as well. Bulldog, he seems to be having a final time so far. Uh, 11 CS. Uh, Axe is certainly winning the lane. Uh, but Bulldog by no means is, is any in any danger of dying. He's, he's, he's doing fine against this axe. He's managing to get involved in these side pulls. Uh, he's getting more than enough experience. Uh, it's just going to be all interesting to see how FN turns up to the fight after starting off here in the jungle and uh, how much he can get done when he, he starts to run into the side of Alliance. I guess he's relying on Solo to, to pick up the Blink Dagger. But I guess the question being, does this axe get the Blink Dagger first, or would you expect to just see a Vanguard come out? Depends on how long you want to stay in the lane versus yeah. the Brood. If you want to stay in the lane a long time versus Brood, you get Vanguard. If you want to gank early, you get the Blink. This game... I, there's kind of merits both ways, because he does have the Infest Bomb, and he's, uh, he's also in, incredibly strong with Ion Shell and Berserker's Call. But you don't want the Brood to get out of control. And you can kill him much easier with, with the blink decker. Uh, I don't know. Radiance top tower is under attack. There's kind of varying philosophy on that too. Top lane. Actually, has Ake coming in. Maybe looking to see if they can get a heal bomb off onto the axe. So they can make this play. Surrounding him with the spiders. There we go. Not maybe quite the amount of damage they hoped for. Well, with the cool and Bulldog's got to be careful. Another spin. Spin might have just done it. Looking to position the spiders again. Another heal bomb available in a second. They'll try and get the positioning right. There's your heal bomb and Alliance. They've done it. Beautiful play from Ake and Bulldog. The spider bomb combination there doing it against the Axe. And Bulldog getting first blood in this lane that was indeed on paper going to be a tough one for him thanks to the presence of Ake. Hey, that was great play from Bulldog. On top of that, Bulldog microed his spider wings yeah. very well. And a big mistake by the Axe by not carrying a TP score. You always want a TP score for a Sith matchup. Because at level 6, sometimes if you get unlucky with spins, he can just run you down with the incapacitating bite. But... Dyer's in this particular game, that's going to attack. set him back a lot. Well, I mean, I guess the question is, does, does Ake try for that again? He's walking back to base to refill on the mana front. Does he just go up top and do they attempt to go for the heal bomb once more? And, and try and get a, another bit of a kill? If he can disrupt the lane, then why not? Yeah. It's not like he's going to really do that much good in the mid lane. Actually, S4, uh, yeah, S4's not 6 yet, so not really any play there. He can't stop a... Uh, dark yeah, here he comes. Away, so Ake yeah. says, oh, this is great fun. Let's try and do it again, Bulldog. And Solo, of course, he TP'd into lane. And he is going for Vanguard. Which I think is fine considering he needed there we go. right before he died. One heal bomb. Start to get the slowdown. Try and position yourself for a second one. This time might be a little bit harder. Did lose a fair few spiders, but okay. Okay, you've been rumbled. The show's over. You're not getting away with it again. And Solo dunks down on what will be a very satisfying kill for him. As uh, they will punish Ake for trying to, to go for the same play. They're not, they're not going to fall foul to that one twice, Vader. And they pass the dust. Life Zero had dust. He passed it on to the Axe. And yeah, that was... Also, really smart play by Solo. The last yeah. time he used his call too early because the Brutalings split off, and he didn't use his call, so he doesn't have the damage from the Spiderlings, which is a significant source of damage once the call is down. Mid lane. I know that we don't be looking out for a, a bit of time. That's kind of just one of those wash lanes, but yeah. he was farm a lot. S4 still getting there slowly, but surely no one uh, still does maintain. Both their CSs are control. actually quite terrible, though. But yeah. that's kind of the two-on-two -two nature of the mid lane. They're half the CS of the safe laners. Yeah. I mean, Loda, Jar picked up the life steal as well, so the self-sustaining lane is going to be fine. Mag on his dark sea again. He's been back and forth between the lane and the side camp. Halfway through level seven, so 
certainly finding the levels um, and uh, actually keeping himself ahead of Bulldog in terms See, of XP. By him going to jungle that early, it also allowed the Dazzle to rotate top. Like, if he were pressuring the Gyro a lot more, then Dazzle can't leave his lane without it being super obvious or without his Gyrocopter, like, just getting destroyed in lane. So that's one of the huge downsides of Iron Talon jungling early. And people are like, oh, now, yeah, why not Iron, Tung J Iron Talon jungle every single game? This is one of the reasons why. That's four now, just on the side. We have to find the level six. And maybe with the presence of EGM, they can try and set up something up mid. But at this stage, again, it's, I mean, this is seven and a half minutes in. We're only seeing 1-1 one, one on the board. Again, is this fine for both sides? Or was there a lineup that you were expecting to, to maybe be a little bit more proactive in trying to find? I think Vegas should have been a little bit yeah. stronger to lanes. That Dazzle rotation, as yeah. well as Mag going to the jungle, I think really set them back in the early game. Because I think they should have won mid. DP versus Peru should be a fairly easy win for Death Prophet. And then Axe versus Brood. Axe should win that matchup, especially when Brood goes Spiderlings. And then in your bottom lane, you have Darkseer versus two relatively weak range heroes, D Gyrocopter and Dazzle. So I think they should have won all three lanes. Right now, it's kind of a wash in all three lanes, which I think is a net negative for Vega. Oh, hold on. Needs to be careful there. He's been dusted up. He can't climb his way up that cliff with the vision the Vega have trapped in the ring. Uh, the dunk down, slam down from Solo. Oh, now he, now Solo's getting really farmed. He already has Vanguard, and he's almost halfway to his Blink Dagger. So. And he's about to get a tier one as well. Yeah, and Broodmother wasn't able to get her Midas in time. She did come into mm -hmm. the phase with before. Bottom lane, S4, this looking to go for the wrap round play. Eyes onto Mag, pops the split. Mag gonna duke it out to the sidelines, and he may just be able to get himself out indeed. Vacuum up. They'll find the vision for the Cyclone, but TP's already coming through. They've got to be careful. Still moving in. Ghost coming out from no one. So Alliance will simply disengage. Mag falling low on the back lines. But S4 getting himself out with that the Earth Spirit. That was a sick vacuum. If he had just TP'd, he would have been slain. But, yeah, with the vacuum, we're retreating under the T2. And buying time for his teammates to come in. They did get Exorcism at the end of the day versus an Arcane Rune Primal Split. No, so. I was going to say, yeah, kind of wasted ult. And this is giving the space for Arcane Egen to put some pressure on the tier 1 mid. <clears throat> still a nice maneuver by them. And Axe still closing in Radiant's on Spring Dagger relatively soon. I will see what's next for them here. So maybe they can take a fight now with Primal Split up and the uh, Exorcism down. That'd be a pretty good timing for them. Unfortunately, Brewmaster will not have Blink by that time. But at the same time, Vega just kind of okay with the jungle, uh, jungle Life Stealer. So. That was a gold graph looking, 1,000 in favor of Vega, as expected with a jungler. I mean, uh, this is, how much of an issue is this, the fact that the Alliance have kind of left FN untouched in the jungle? It's, uh, I mean, are they, are they okay with this? Can they deal with a lifestealer that's had this amount of free, free farm in the jungle? Bane the is exceptionally minutes? good at dealing with a lifestealer. And Brewmaster is also exceptionally good at dealing with a lifestealer. Lifestealer can't finish him off, and without rage, you're just going to be thrown up in the air attack. over and over Dyer's and over again. So I think they have the tools, at least early. Once he starts hitting hard enough that he can just, like, kill Dyer's people in, like, a matter of one and a half attack. seconds, then they might be under some pressure. But as of now, I think they're perfectly okay. They're making that same maneuver on bottom, and yeah. deja vu. Eyes onto Bulldog as well. He has been dusted. He's playing it nicely, though, keeping himself away. And the dust halfway through his duration. Can he get himself out of this one? Heads up to the north, and, and they haven't got vision on him. Uh, he's outside of their peripheral range. Another dust expended. That one's not even going to clip him, so Bulldog, he'll be fine. And with the spiders on to show him the Slayer. Do you want to feed the... Oh, my tower. goodness. It's close. Nearly giving up a, a fair bit of gold there to the DP. But uh, with the pressure put on, you know, making a, a huge rotation come out from the side of Vega, unable Dyer's to kill Bulldog. Tier 1 down bottom is taken. There's a smoke up from Alliance. They're looking to wrap around and react to, to the reaction that Bulldog forced from Vega. Try and cut them off from the side here. Bulldog on the high ground. Let's see what they can find. No one's actually... Uh, this invis room for no one could spell disaster. That's awkward. Yeah, it will indeed. Dispels the smoke. They know that the gig's up. And Alliance kind of wondering what was going on there. Radiance Might have now done on the brew. Uh, brew ma mother. Uh, looking toward the, the brew master. Um, if S4 is able to get this tier one up to the top, he will have that Radiance blink dagger done. In fact, actually one attack. more wave, and uh, he will have the gold for the blink. Primal split at the ready. So, if Vega come in to try and defend this, it's it's going to be a bit of a messy fight. So I imagine that at this point they just let Alliance get away with this tier one. Radiance Especially without the blink dagger on X. Yeah. 
He's pretty close. Not that close. Dyer's top tower is under yeah, attack. We have it. Free tower here for Alliance. Really, fortification will come through. Solo. He's gonna make his way up there, but they're not gonna commit anything else here. Just Turn defense, away. Vega. Extra yeah. tower for the guys, and uh, Loader continue to farm up nicely on the gyrocopter. If we look at the Radiant's the net worth of this stage, 12 minutes attack. in, uh, Loader's at the top. And Alliance make this move so often when there's a broodmother. Five man, the enemy safe lane. Take down the tower, let brood farm the jungle. And teams have yet to find a response to that. And again, it's, it just feels so strange, these, these games with Alliance versus Vega, where we're 12 minutes in, there's, there's only been three deaths. Very, very slow paced games. The top lane eyes onto Solo. They'd love to go for a bit of the heal bomb play, but Solo, let's see if he's uh, wanting to come out. Oh, hello. Weave onto him. Heal bomb. Not going to do too much. Solo's going to be fine. He's not going to fall to that one again. S4 on EGM. Eyes on finishing off the tier one mid. It's incredibly low. Always Vega. Just keeping the farm up. FN back into the jungle. Top of the phase helmet. Picked up the Blightstone. Look to try and get that Echo Saber online before turning up to the fights again. And obviously just having that Infest Bomb with Solo once he has the Blink Dagger complete, which uh, he has Dyer's just picked up right now. So they've got half smoke, a though. They have a smoke. I don't see a smoke. Gemma Alliance. S4. Just coming around here. Did spot out a mag by the secret shot. Roshan's up. Uh, I mean, is do we see? Uh, I expect to see a side going for Roshan. Vega could. Uh, yeah. You want a team fight first, and you want to win a team fight without exorcism, so you can commit it to Rosh. How are, how are they going to make this move without smoke? That is just. Uh, it is so awkward. Is so clunky. I mean, do they? They might find us, but that they know. You know, Alliance. They're they're being careful. They're backing oh, off. Oh, uh, okay, okay. He didn't get the memo. Straight in under the tier one. Your life Jumping in, taking down the poor old Dazzle. No save for himself. Bulldog making the most of the space that's been given to him, doing a significant amount of damage to the tier two. TP coming in from FN. Alliance unable to really hit back without Ake. Uh, Lotus going to make his way along the river, river here. He's, uh, he has found no one. Uh, he's going to start to go with this. S4 jumps in a nice silence. And with the vacuum, the wall dropped as well. Loader and S4 in a bit of trouble. They get the primal split off. Loader's got to get himself out of this one. Falling low as no one chases him down. Tries to go for a deny. He's not going to make it. They've lost Loader. They will find Shoma in return. But not the trade that Alliance wanted there. No one trying to waltz himself back around. Maybe thinking of him going for more. The Nightmare and actually the stun kind of staggered there. But at the least, they'll just hold back the Death Prophet. Allow the escape of the rest of the team. And at the same time, Broodmother, top lane, able to find a solo kill onto FN. So Alliance overall wants to be happy with that. It didn't look ideal at the start where they lose loader, but Bulldog making sure that the trade attack. does end up going the way of Alliance. And really eyes onto mid. EGM seeing if he can set him up. He's got a Fiend's Grip. He's going to blow it straight away, but Sherman's there. He's got the glimpse. This might not be enough to save no one, though. S4 moving in. The brain out. They'll do it. They'll take down the Death Prophet. Another kill for Alliance. Now, ready to get in for the push. X is in this weird situation where he's constantly having to deal with the brood, and he's got a spider on him as well, just just marking the position. Yeah, he, he's their main initiator, though. Yeah. And they haven't been able to get clean jumps because he's constantly up there, and he's kind of forced to be up there. Darkseer maybe can do that, but he's the mech carrier, so they want him to team fight. Death Prophet is far too vulnerable to be left up there alone, not even having that Yules yet, and. No one might be the hero to pick on this game. Brewmaster is similar levels of farm to DP, but Brewmaster has his ultimate. He can Radiant generally get the team fights A-OK. -okay. Yeah, he really, really can, as we've seen. I mean, Vega, attack. they're going to go for a smoke. They want to try and catch someone out here. No exorcism, though, for this fight. And uh, we'll, we'll just come back up for Max. So let's see what Solo can find with the lead in. Surged up. He's going to head up to the high ground. They've got the vision onto Loader. They'll catch him, Loader. There's going to be any kind of support, any kind of backup. Static Stones dropped as well. Wall as well. There's no escape for Loader. He's going to be a free kill for Vega. All has to do anything to punish it. It doesn't look like they can, so they just have to let one, one go. So nice smoke from Vega. Successful kill onto the enemy carry. And they'll turn into a push as well onto the tier one here. And Primal split up for 20 seconds. Yep. Alliance should be aware that they do have a ward up that hill, or at least suspect as much. And don't really have any tower hitters. Ah, uh, yeah. Solo jumping in onto S4. S4 dragged down to the low ground by the vacuum. Contained by the kinetic field. And Vega is on the retreat. Alliance, they don't really want to fight without Gyrocopter. 
but no tower conversion. Oh, yeah. That's a big Master. kill too, the gyrocopter kill. You'd expect to be able to take down the tower after that because it's like half their team fight. And this is a game as well where Bulldog, he's uh, certainly finding the space. 7.8k net worth on your brood mother. Minus soaring face boots, Echo Saber. Level 13 as well. <laughs> and he's nearly finished off the tier two on the top lane. Um, so Bulldog, He's, he's having the game that he wants to. Yeah, and very consistent on yeah. the Broodmother. I, I can't remember the last time we saw a bad performance from, from Bulldog and Brood. Actually, I think I can. I think they lost a game at the Major with it. But other than that, 90% of the time, Bulldog's going to have a great time. That's for certain. Vega, looking to make a play again. FN inside a solo. Top lane, Bulldog, just doing his best to, to really harass back no one. He wants to get himself in, finish off that tier two. Very, very low as he has his eyes on it at the moment. Bulldog. Going to move in. Just needs the creep road to come in close enough to remove the back door. And uh, he can just send the spiders to finish attack. it. And there we have it. Radiant takes down the range grip. I'll take down the tower as well. More money to the pockets of Alliance. Bulldog maintaining good control of the lane. And again, it's going to be the same build that we saw from uh, S4 in the third game this morning against Fnatic. Picking up that Midas after the Blink Dagger. So he can continue to progress at a, at a good rate. And as you uh, pointed out before, uh, just the importance of getting levels on the Brewmaster. That was Cap. That was Cap, actually. I, I thought that when I was saying it. I was like, hang on. That wasn't you, Ben. That was not me. That was not you, Ben. <laughs> but you would agree with Cap? Levels are important for Brew? Levels are important for many groups. Yeah, that's true. So oh, you, you're not, you wouldn't say you're a huge fan of this kind of late game Midas pick? Well, late-ish Midas pick. Reliable gold. Yeah? Brew's not good at farming. That's no. for sure. So I think it really augments his biggest weakness, which is people avoiding fights and outweighing or like waiting out your potency from your ultimate. Yeah. And you scale bit better by getting auras. He loves his Vlads on the Brewmaster, as do most Brewmaster players, and it just makes you a lot more relevant going to the late game. It also opens up the Rojan potential for okay. you, and the Midas just makes the game much less one-dimensional for the Brewmaster, which is blink in ult and just do your thing. GM nearly got there. the Alliance favorite as uh, you're talking about in game one. Four stuff nearly done. Uh, I mean, this is going to be pretty brilliant against uh, Vega's draft, uh, especially for kind of the hype potential again, it's keeping people away from the lifesteal. I actually steal. don't think it's that great this game. You don't think against the lifesteal? It's great against lifesteal, terrible against Kinetic Field, okay. terrible against Axe, okay. and not particularly good for Stark. But I mean, is, is there anything you would have liked CGM maybe think about getting instead then? Of a four star that would have been a glimmer cape, anything like that. Glimmer cape is really bad because they don't have that much magical damage, yeah. and because they already have a gem on the axe. Okay. Uh, I would like to see medallion so they can do roach. Oh, he's actually. Oh wait, wait, wait. Dazzle is on medallion. So. Okay. But also on Bane. Yeah, I guess four staff's fine. Glimmer maybe so he can get the jump on some people. Eh, yeah, but great. as you said, with the gem on axis. Yeah. Uh, I mean, okay, I guess you yeah. can try and play four around. Four staff is fine. Yeah. Uh, Bulldog as well, really racking up the gold here, 3.5k. Uh, what, what does he go for after the Echo Saber? I believe we've... I'm trying to think what he normally goes for when he goes the Echo Saber build. So sometimes he, he's picked up like the... Uh, he varies it up a lot. He, he does sometimes get the Blood Thorn. I've seen that before. Orchid is great versus Lifesteal. Right? Yeah. Vega heading to the Roach Pit will be immediately scattered out by the Seder and all of Alliance headed towards the pit. Are Aside from yeah. Boom, Bulldog. Uh, they've got to get themselves over here. If Loda can drop the combo. They've got a good chance. It's more important of it that he gets the split off. This is the most yeah. important, crucial Dyer's part of the fight. They can definitely contest it. It's not the quickest attempt from Vega with the weave on no one. He's taken a few punches here from Roshan. So they can get themselves in, Alliance. Need to respond to this. They're waiting on Broodmother's spiders to scout out the situation. There's the cooldown. They're ready to move in. Spiders in as well. Can they steal this away from the guys? S4 comes in, but the Aegis has already been claimed. FM picks it up. Rages tries to walk it off. Static Storm. The wall's down as well. The silence dropped out. He's caught out four of Alliance. Solo will still be taken down. FM fighting up against EGM. The brain's out. They'll burst down the Aegis. Siphon from no one. Keeping him alive. Bring in EGM low. He's going to go for the TP out. Is he going to make it? He is. They'll get EGM out of the fight. So one for one, and they were able to pop the Aegis. This is not bad for a fight the Alliance ran into after the back of losing the chance to get it, but this is bad for them. Limps back onto Loda, caught in the field. They'll lose the carry. Oh, so what a great silence coming up from no one. He silenced four yeah. heroes. And no grave under the brew. No split from the brew. And that is a lost fight. And nice arcane boost at the end to pick up that plus one with the man on Disruptor getting that glimpse. And that was... A good fight by Vega. I'm not sure what Alliance was waiting for. They waited a little bit too long. I think it might have even been okay to just like blink an ult right outside the pit. 
rather right. than going to the center. Yeah, they wanted to, to wait the, out the, the get the profit off. ultimate, but yeah. if you wait at the profit ultimate, you just give away Roche for free. And they yeah, were absolutely. going for the Roche steal, but it was just a little bit too late in. More importantly, too predictable. Vega had the instant Yules onto him, to a static storm, into a silence. So. Yeah, EGM with an Invis. This could be a good setup. He doesn't have Fiend's Grip. That is a lot of spider wings. What on earth? Yeah. All right, looks like they're not going to be feeling confident right, of going for that. Staff into there. He still wants to go. He's pinging it out. Nightmare. Where's the follow through? S4 with the blink clap. That's going to be the, the call. And here we have it. In with the spiders. She's using herself up to buy some time, but no one in a lot of trouble here. And they will get the kill. Alliance now they're turning for more. Bulldog pops the BKB. Double kill for the man on the spider. Spider Man indeed. Second kill for Bulldog. Continues to maintain his position at the top of the chart. 12k net worth on the spider. It's been another brilliant game for, for the uh, fans of the uh, Arachnid. 7-7 seven, seven at the moment between the two sides. A very similar pace to kind of game one that we saw. Um, but again, uh, this is something that you feel favors Alliance. Yep. You, you feel Vega should be getting more done with the, the tools that, and the heroes they have in a game like this. Yep. Yep. I think they have better team fight and yep. I think they have better gank with the Infest Bomb. They've also had a gem for a while, or they did have a gem. Where did the gem go? Where did the gem go? I don't know. Is that one chicken? <laughs> Yep, that's on Bane. Okay. Radiant AGM. Middle tower oh, that, is under that's attack. a big blow to them. Now Broomother the kind of has a gem free steal. time. <laughs> gem steal. Is that a new hero? Gem steal. Could they come? Let's see what the guys do here in the mid lane. Push coming in from Vega. That's maybe in a position to, to defend. Pro I guess Promise Split, so I'm caught after 40 attack. seconds. They'll they let this go. BKB on Peru. Yeah. I think that's more important than a plaza at this point, just because they have so many tools to control them up. Right. Popping the Exorcism as well. They're going to try and go for more. They will get the glimpse back onto EGM. EGM, he'll force himself, but he's gone. Vega feeding down one, and with the Exorcism freshly popped, they can look to continue the push, try and take down Mortz with the Arcane Rune as well. This is go time ready for the Death Prophet. Alliance, they're going to have to hold the defenses with a man down. They may just end up having to let this, uh, let this tier two go. By the looks of it. And, oh, a life stealer. Actually, there with the help of Solo, they'll kill off, uh, kill off S4. So no S4, no EGM. Vega, in a fantastic position to keep the momentum flowing. Oh, still a little bit too careful. I guess the exorcism coming off. They they don't want to risk it. They're happy with the damage done. And Shiva's guard now finished up. Oh, no, no one as well. So so their push is, is beginning to look very scary, very hard for Alliance to fight into as it scales up here. I believe it's that the... Yeah, okay, finished S and Y on top of the Dragon Lance for Loder. So Loder himself in a good point to fight 24 minutes into the game. But, uh, a good bit of play there from Vega. Set back, sets back Brew a lot. He will go for the Vlads yeah. as opposed to the BKB. X posing a lot of problems. I'm pretty surprised that they were able to kill the blue so quickly. He does have Max Drunken Brawler. I want to see, yeah. Uh, okay, looks like the build from uh, Bordok. He's going to be picking up the AC this game for the team. Hyperstone done. Wires, EGM and Ake. Looking to move out. Let me get a bit of a warding mission done here into the jungle of Vega. They're just going to hold back. They don't want to go blindly in on their own. And they were just looking for a ward on the yeah. high ground. Uh, Bordo leading the push in. Uh, it's going to be a smoke up from my lines. See if they can get the wraparound from behind. Primal Split's available, but immediately scanned out by Vega. They know something's up. They know there's a movement from Alliance, and uh, they are maybe going to try and counter it. They're going to head up to the high ground themselves. Maybe seeing if they can get the, uh, the high ground jump onto the side. <laughs> Bulldog's got to be careful. If they, they don't feel they can get the jump on the smoke, they may just move in onto the spider. S4 still hanging around with the Broodmother. And a blink down. EGM might find the opening for a Fiend's Grip. This has going to be laid down onto Solo. It's a nice weave as well. Laid down onto the three. Vega, they've got to be careful about fighting under the duration of this one. Now back off. Alliance unable to find anything without smoke, but at the same time, Vega unable to punish it with a kill. It's being patient. Alliance... Don't have BKB, so yeah. they're very scared about getting the jump with Axe. And I guess a Nightmare can maybe save them, but the Grave, very ineffective versus the Axe. So they really have to make sure that people don't die during the initial burst. And as you mentioned, the Force Staff 
might be their main tool, but all their solutions are just subpar. The Nightmare, not going to last very long versus the Rage Nakes, and they do scan up another smoke in the middle lane. Yeah, so I guess they might have to jump the Axe, but BKB is ideal. So that Life Stealer doesn't isn't able to... Deep smoke as well. And they might still catch Lodi. Still come out. They pinged it out. Lines. They knew that something was a mark. But Lodi still walks into it. Vega find themselves one pick off. Can they find themselves anything more? Bulldog is around. And he'll keep himself out of harm's way. But this is not where you expect the gank to be. I'd say, I mean, it was a deep gank, that's for sure. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Vega off the back of it. And at the momentum with the creeps, they'll take down a tier two. And uh, yeah, Exorcism's himself. Looks like it's going to be the indicator Radiant's to try and go for more. Maybe try and force out the buyback from Loda. Still off off the map for 30 Radiant's seconds. Let's see how they can hold this without the Gyrocopter. They're going to need to send their forces back. Exorcism ripping through the towers Radiant's here. Structure. Fortification will buy some time. With the weave down as well onto Vega, might be enough to slow them a little bit. No one seems to be uh, insistent on standing strong. We'll finish off the tier three. It looks like that will be all though. Yeah, they're going to TP back out immediately after that one. But nonetheless, getting a tier three for free. Big kill onto Loader. Vega certainly keeping the control on that. I mean, as we can see, up and down the network overall. This is it's a very close game in terms of the numbers. Seems as if Vega have much better control of the map right now. Yeah. Their team fight is superior because the Brewmaster is still very scared to jump in. If he dies due to a sex storm or a Yule's an aesthetic storm or even a vacuum to interrupt it, I guess it's the most unlikely of the three. But they do have ways to stop him from catching his ultimate. And if they lose that, they would just lose everybody else at this point with Broodmother being the only one that does have a BKB and Gyrocopter maybe wanting to farm that up at some point to deal with the vacuum, vacuum wall. Or even the glyphs. Like the glyphs is a is a big issue at this point. They may able to get a lot of plus ones. This could be uh, one of the, the stepping stones for Alliance that they've been waiting for. AC done on Bulldog a minute or so until Roshan's back up. So if they can get the Aegis and get the push on with the AC uh, uh, done, that's that's going to put them in a really good position. At the same time though, Greaves picked up by Mag onto the darks here. They are going to have the tools ready for the defense. No one's That's getting pretty sure. Yep. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm Octarine nearly done. Well, uh, he's, okay. he's, he's still got a Mystic Self to work through. It's only 29 minutes, though. Yes, yeah, you see, it's a very good pace for, for, the, ga for the game. So Tome on him, hoping, I guess, to get that level 16. Are they going to give it to him? Looks like it. And they will pick up a second gem, or maybe he just bought it for his teammate. I see. Who gets the time? No one at the moment. Well, I say no one. It might be someone else. Oh, anyway, anyway, it's going to go to Shoma. I'll give it to the Disruptor. Start to work his way towards level 11. He's very close as well to picking it up. Uh, Lion's actually uh, in position to smoke. Maybe trying to bait out with the, the mild push from the Broodmother. Baker are around. This is a very risky time to, to take a fight, but it'll have big rewards if you can... Find a pick or two before Roshan's back up. Solo. Might be caught out here. They're actually going to jump in onto no one. Fiends Griffin easy from EGM. The combo coming through. Bar. They brought him down 60 seconds without this man. He went full in as well. No buyback available for no one. So Alliance, they'll just head up straight to the high ground. I don't know if they realize that this man has, he's got no money. Where was his team? They expected like a blink. Vacuum, perhaps, to save him from the Fiend's Grip so that he can pop his heels. They and might even find more here. Shoma oh gets my. burst down. Vacuum will answer for FN turning up, looking to take down a little bit of the Shallow Graves there. The dog, the dog, solo. Double kill for the Axe. Alliance certainly, the aggression's been halted. They're being forced back by Vega, the four staff in. Solo, can he get the lock down? Yes, he can with the surge forward. Gets the cool off. On to Bulldog, it's gonna be another dunk. Triple kill for the man on the axe. And now he's looking for more. Eyes on to Ake. Solo is not done here. Vega, their Jimmy's have been rustled. And Ake, he'll be rustling in his grave. It's an ultra kill for Solo. What a defense there for, for a team that were lacking. A Death Prophet and a Disruptor. The power of the axe shown there. And just the, the uselessness of a Dazzle against those dunks. They need BKBs, vacuum wall, vacuum wall into call with Ion Shell, Life Sealer beating on you. That was devastating. Oh, Axe is done as well. I can't remember the last time we've seen an Axe Axe. Yeah. Damn. The, the dunks are going to be real.
Yeah, we've mostly seen Blade Mills come out for them. Yeah. I think Armor is pretty decent versus their lineup, too. Got to get those duns. Absolutely, Vega. That was a wild fight. That was crazy. Yeah. That's it. And this is such a great time to take a fight like that. As I said, going into that one, you're finding this position where Roshan's just back in the game. Aegis now on FN. Alliance certainly on the back foot now. This is a very, very fat axe that's going to be running at them. Still, the, the farmer load has been good. He's maintaining that lead. Broom over as well. There's always the threat of this the, the, this, this dong and, and 2.2k on the AC. It's uh, going to be interesting to see what Bulldog goes for next. I mean, what, what do you think he does pick up as his next time? Does he, is this way he gets the bots involved so he can start to go for those plays around the map? Mm, I think you want another damage item. Okay. Bloodthorn is Blood pretty Thorn. decent. Very good against a life stealer, although he's mostly just going to pop out of rage or pop out of the infest and then rage immediately. I think Butterfly is pretty Radiant good versus their lineup. Increase your damage attack. output a lot because you really need to kill people during your BKB. What else is there? Daedalus is kind of meh. Manta style is kind of meh. Oh, a lot. Is under I guess for damage, you, you'd just rather get the blood fawn over the Daedalus if you want to go some kind of crit lock that. It's just I an so. all round better item for the map. Is the silence really that useful, though? I don't know. I don't think the silence is that useful this game. Maybe on the axe. Not against the life stealer, as you said. The life stealer is usually infested. I guess that's true. He's the one getting the jump on you. Yeah. yeah. So he's gonna pop it yeah. as soon as he gets raged, and he has Aegis at this point. Darkseer has Greaves, so he just Greaves it off. Yeah, Death Prophet has Yules, he'll just Yules it off. Disruptor, maybe. Yeah, Disruptor is kind of chilly in the back, though. Static song. Yeah, it's a bit of an issue, of course, for uh, for the likes of. Brood Mother will kill Disruptor. Uh, I guess that's true. You can't silence the death. Radiance middle tower has fallen. Vega. Getting the exorcism out and time to push in. Let's see what Alliance can do to stop this. It's a strong push. Radiant they need some kind of initiation. Fortification pop, EGM. We can see if we can get any kind of lock on. Vega a little, little bit timid here. Right, they are respecting the punch back from Alliance. I'm just having to hang back and wait for the next creep wave to, to move in. But this is a lot of time of exorcism essentially wasted on no one. So uh, I don't even know if they're going to get away with a tier 3. Solo, he's got FN inside him. Uh, they are ready for the live stealer bomb to take place. They went to it. Alliance hold. So coming through. EGM slowly creeping forward. Back there on the sidelines, he is ready for the Wombo. If Alliance do start to step too close for their own comfort. Alliance, another hold. Uh, we'll, we'll see BKB very shortly coming out for Loader as well. So. And they may want to be careful about fighting uh, without that done. He's, he's uh, about a couple hundred gold away from having the BKB done. I wonder if S4 is going to pick one up. Yeah. I guess alternatively he could pick up Sh Shiva's, I think? Shiva's on the brew? Yeah. I guess it would be nice. Are you against the three melee core? And there they go. Mass BKBs. That's time I think to roll. that's the primary reason why they lost the last fight. So yep. It's pretty good choice uh, they are going all in though there, there's no buybacks and there are two lanes which are you know exposed right up into the race right top lanes doesn't even have a tier three so a little bit risky here for alliance if they do take a fight and lose these cores but if they win a team fight Vega it's, doesn't have a t3 yeah. in their mid so it's kind of the same way i see okay. for both teams like if you buy back you're not going to be able to get to the fight that quickly no one yeah. has bot's up on the on vega and like if you're death prophet you die with exorcism your buyback's not particularly useful now uh, one thing that i actually uh there is a push coming in bottom. Loader, he does not have a slot for a TP. Uh, I guess uh, an emergency what he sells is a killer picks up one, but he's not going to be able to react to the push down bottom if it comes in heavy from Vega. I think it's really coming in heavy from Vega. Loader, where's your TP, son? He can maybe bomb one off EGM. I guess they're going to need him back here. Base in trouble. I mean, Elias, they're still going to push. Okay, uh, they'll force Solo back, but no one in FN, they're sticking around. Primal Split coming out from the sidelines. They try and cancel one TP. They will cancel Shem of the Slayers, but Exorcism coming through here, the heal bomb. They'll take down one buyback straight away from Disruptor, but they get away with this. Meanwhile, mid lane, Loader and EGM sticking around with Bulldog. And the middle, middle is cleared out. So the trade will be done. Mid, mid racks for the bottom racks. They actually kill no one. 
S4, King of the Power of the Spirit Siphon, he's got to back himself up, FN trying to move in as well, still the fight contains mid, is having going in, Loader with a BKB cooldown as well, Mag forced out, FN's turn back up, EGM go for the Fiends grip, but FN bites down onto the Bane, kills him off, Loader's got to get himself out of this, but Solo, he's hot on the chase, Loader's making his way back to base, can he get himself out of it? Solo's got a blink in a couple of seconds, if it's going to be, uh, he's, he's going to try and cut him off for the sidelines. I think Loder's going to be lucky and uh, will be able to get himself back to his friends. Uh, so a bit of an interesting play there from both sides. They could go full in on the bottom. They claim the racks. Alliance go full in on the mid. They get a racks. So it actually gets the call off here. Back in S4, ready to hit back. No split though for 30 seconds. Mag jumping forward. I need to be careful. They're down a man for 10 seconds. Vega now in a position to push through. The, the waves come through as well. So, uh, what's going on? Is it a favorable trade for Vega by the looks of it? Because they do get a trade and now they're still in the position of power with their, with their current positioning on Alliance's half of the map. Well, it certainly helped that he did have an Arcane Rune at that point. Yeah. I, think it w mm, I think both teams were okay with it. Vega were okay. like, yeah, we got more out of it. But Alliance were like, we're probably not as strong as team fights, so if we trade evenly on objectives, we're doing okay. But as you mentioned, Vega continuing to go up. Exorcism just up in three seconds time. Homing Missile on the range creep. Bam! He got shown. Goodbye, Jim. 10-15. Uh, BKB done now on Axe. Uh, it's it's going to be a very nice cross against Loader. Just the magic damage output that he's kind of relying on at the, mo at the moment. Hasn't really got that, that big DPS physical item picked up yet. And it allows him not to get kited by the Brewmaster. That's yes. your worst nightmare as yeah. an Axe. You blink in, you call, and then you get cycling immediately. And then you don't have your blink or your call, and you're kind of just like stuck hoping you get hit. This is panning out to be an interesting one. Uh, at this state of the game, as we can see, Vega, they do have the overall lead net worth, but 5k, 38 minutes in, it's it's nothing that can't be turned around with one good successful team fight for Alliance. Roshan, still a bit of a time before we, we'll see that one come back up, and uh, it's smoke time for Alliance. They want to try and get something done with the primal split, look for a jump towards the mid lane. Now, let's see uh, if they are going to be able to do this. They're fighting into all the ults of Vega, everything ready for, for the side of the Dyer. Bulldog positioning himself and trying to get vision for the team. It's night time. Vision is limited. Shiva's got now used. We use there. They, they know what's up. Alliance, they just need to close the gap. They need to get S4 in with a blink clap. But already, Vega reacting. Backing up, keeping themselves away from the side. And it looks like Alliance won't find anything with the smoke. So it's going to be Vega themselves. The double back smoke. Now wanting to take advantage of the fact that they know that Alliance were just in a position trying to look for some action. Maybe Vega can catch them off guard now. They'll make the deep movement over over the river. They're going to head straight towards the top lane. They're going to cut past the secret shop. And they are going to find people here. Bulldog on the high ground, actually dispelling some of these smokes. They need to be careful here, Alliance. They could get caught apart. Eyes onto Ake. Ake is going to be the one in trouble. At the same time, they try and go onto Loader. Loader pops the BK build. Will still be caught up by the call. They'll cancel Ake's TP with a vacuum. Back towards Loader. The dunk down's there, and two are dead. Solo. Finding the big, Why cool did kills. Walk back? Did he? Wow. Did he just get owned by the call that bad? Yeah. Vega, they've managed to find themselves another set of racks. Yeah, fortification and pieback, no messing here for Alliance. They're very close to, to being megged with their last set. Two sets of racks being exposed. Bulldog, it's gone to FN. FN, the rage, ready to fight back. There we go, S4 jumps in with the BKB, makes sure he gets the split off. Ah, already, Lies to the jumps into Mag, tries to get himself out. They've got the Cyclones control, no one. But Loda, Bulldog, Bulldog gonna get dunked. Loda, he's gotta run, he's gotta hide. This is a die back if he goes down here. They've gotta keep this man safe. Bulldog will buy back. They'll allow Loda the space to move back. And the Fiends grip onto no one. Can they be putting this man down? Bulldog, Dunge Chomp, the Exorcism Ghost healing him up. They can't kill no one for the time being. And now the Static Storm traps up Bulldog. He's caught S4 as well, Solo with the spins. He's gonna have the dunks. There's one, there's two. Solo cleaning up Alliance. Vega forcing them back to the base here. Can Alliance hold at this point? It's a die back on Bulldog. He's dead for 100 seconds. EGM, Nightmare onto Solo, they need to find kills, but the Nightmare's gone back the way of Loader. Again, it's ogling in here, S4 jumping in with a three-man clap, the cooldown, the Rocket Barrage is there. They've taken down Solo, eyes towards no one as well, Alliance, they should be able to clean up the Death Prophet here. A second kill on the defense, but it's a costly one. Alliance have been mega creeped, but this is a position that we've been used to seeing Alliance get in time and time again, and they have shown us that they can turn around games at this stage, but... It's going to be incredibly hard, Ben Vega. I could be very, very happy with the way that this has gone. Yeah, he's going to need a rapier to turn this one around. And we already see the anti-megas coming out. Bane with the maelstrom pickup. And 
they are prepping for the long one, but seemingly bleak outlook for Alliance. Yeah. Because Vega just keep on winning team fight after team fight. Seems like Life Stealer is still strong in this patch after all, and the way they want to deal with Alliance's greed is by having greedy heroes of their own. With this jungle axe just right. destroying them. I'm mean, actually going to be Lotus just going for the bots as well. So it looks like they're going to just try and get the rest of the team pushing down the mid lane. Lotus is going to do his best to clear out some of the mechas and then they're going to maybe TP in. Just go full in for the win. They've cleaned out the mid lane racks. Uh, the at this stage, Alliance, if they want to go in, they've got to go for just an all out push surely onto the base. It seems that way. But then how do they deal with just like an axe blinking with BKB and then a rage like they're popping out? Maybe like a really good fiend grip? can come out and EGM can save the day, but that seems pretty unlikely because Darkseer can just interrupt that and their team fight is just really strong for Vega right now. Exorcism to force Alliance to come to them. They have tools to deal with the Brewmaster Ultimate and more importantly, the Axe Lifesealer combo just immediately kills one of Alliance's hero at the start of the fight. And it looks like they're trying to do a different variant of the combo with a newly acquired Hexen Darkseer. And Vega, of course, taking Roshan when the game is in this kind of a space. You've already got the Megas. It's very unlikely that Alliance can do anything to stop this. They're going to have to let this one go. It's, it's looking rocky, Ben. It's looking like we, we are on the verge of seeing a game free from this series. Absolutely. Vega really stepped it up here in game two. We said they needed to change it up. They, they've done exactly that. And it's still not the quickest of starts. But now, a very, very strong, powerful force that Vega have managed to build up. And the line is just, just una unable to contain it and control it. So the answer was to take it slower by having a jungle. I guess so. The, the, the jungle lives through suddenly worked out here. Looking for the catch on the side. Won't quite get it. Mag, making a beeline for Bulldog. Does have that side we've got to remember on the dark here as well. I'm worried about a force staff. Without the axe, the force staff will own that initiation. Unless you have Abyssal, which he does not. It's blood on Bulldog. He's gone all in. Such a hard fight for Alliance, though. Relying almost for sure on, on Vega just making a, a mess up. But Vega, they've, they've not been messing up this game. They've been playing really tight, though. So what do they really need? Like a full duration grip on a very important hero? Probably no one. It's a very hard team to get the potential to do that. So, so many ways of interrupting EGM's group. It's on to Bulldog, so they're trying to jump in. Actually, going to miss the call here. FN's jumped out, BKBs are there. The Primal Spirit's already out. They'll turn towards Solo. Bulldog has actually blood formed a creep here. Bit of a misplay. They'll turn towards no one. Can they kill this Death Prophet? The Octarine Hill, is it going to be enough? Pops the cheek. Can they, can they kill it? I don't think they can. They can't. And now the turnaround. Dogs here, Wolf Vacuum. They've found two. They've found three. Alliance, they're crumbling. And Vega, they've done it. They'll take this series to a game three. Alliance just messing up a little bit too much, and Vega are just playing really well at the end of the day. And as you said, the jungle life stealer, it worked perfectly. Solo's axe pickup, it was great this game. And Loda, he never really got the damage that he needed to deal with Vega's aggression. And Vega comboed really well. The Darkseer axe combo that we saw like three or four yeah. times that kind of sealed the deal for them in that mid fight, that was the real game winner for Vega. And. I think some question needs to be asked about whether or not they should commit for the Midas's or yes. goal in the team fight. But yeah. this, this is what happens with the Brood pick. You're kind of stuck in this weird place where your early laning phase is supposed to be great, but your late game, even though it's Bulldog on the Brood Mother, is still a Brood Mother, and he wasn't able to carry them to victory at the end of the day. It wasn't indeed. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be hopping to a, a short break, so don't go anywhere. We'll be back very shortly for more action between Vega and Alliance as we talk you through game two, what happened there, and uh, bring us into the final deciding match of the third series of the day. We'll see you in a couple of minutes.